Some people got really hung up about it, so I just want to clarify that I did not intentionally leave out my review of Jungin's performance in Lovesick Girls. I just forgot to write it down, which can happen when I'm rushing and just don't find anything too noteworthy to talk about compared to the rest of the team. Due to the narrative, my mind was preoccupied with the other three's performance, and I just think Jungin was the dreaded fine on stage. She's technically a very proficient singer who lacks in emoting. She's technically a very good dancer who lacks in stage presence sometimes. That just came through on this stage to me and made her less memorable. I genuinely didn't realize I forgot about it until I was in the Frankfurt airport trying to scramble to finish editing and uploading the video during my layover so I couldn't add it. All that aside, I really chose the worst days for 24 hours of flights and layovers. In terms of starting this review series after booking my flights, literally all my flights were booked on Thursdays. I landed in Germany basically when the finale had just finished airing. Also realized really last minute, literally like two hours before close, that I had the opportunity to apply for the live audience for episode 10, so I did, but we didn't get picked, so we went on a ghost tour instead. My friend who's a big Zero Base One fan got to go though. I'm pretty sure she gave her vote to Fuko or maybe Jiyoon because we talked about them before she went, and she knew Fuko from Girls Planet. I haven't actually asked yet. Anyways, I watched this episode while my friend Nap on day two in Seoul, so let's get into the review, shall we? We start with a quote from The Little Mermaid, I'm pretty sure, so there goes all hope of the final group having an interesting concept. Way too much time then goes into the intro and recap again, and the episode actually begins with the reveal of the Lovesick Girls unit's producer scores and the interim lineup after the first test. Sebi receives 90 points for a total of 188, not enough to surpass Jimin. Coco just barely edges her out for second place with 193 points and a total score of 189. Jonglin and Yuju receive a respective 85 and 73 for a total of 165 and 163, placing them in 8th and 10th respectively. This means our interim top 6 are Jimin, Coco, Sebi, Jiyun, Fuko, and Kyuri. I genuinely wouldn't mind this debut lineup. Of course, having my top 3 is already going to make me like it, but it currently has 4 out of my top 6, and I do like Jimin and Sebi as performers. Especially if they get put into some intensive training boot camp to sharpen their vocal skills before debut. But enough musings on that, our current last place is Son Juwon, who this show has treated really unfairly, but I do genuinely believe the producers thought Yui would be there instead. Everything about Juwon's edit should have made her the ah, she was so talented and funny, I'm gonna miss her in part 2 trainee because she was well liked, but not a strong one pick. I think that would have actually changed a lot regarding the team composition so far, but I'll get into that later maybe. I wanted to really quickly run down the producer scores so we can actually see how they rank the girls without the influence of the audience scores. In first, we have Jimin with 95 points, second is Coco with 93 Three, third is Sebi and Jiyun with 90, fifth is Gyuri with 86, followed by Fuko and Jungan with 85, eighth is Sujang with 82, then Sarang with 81, Juwon with 79, Mai in 11th with 75, and Yuju in 12th with 73. There is a total of 22 points between the first and last ranked for the mentors. I wanted to put it up like this because I've seen a lot of discussions lately about the mentors pushing agendas in their scoring, and while I think some girls are overrated and others are underrated, this is still pretty consistent with their scoring in part one, just with higher standards and expectations. Yuju couldn't deliver it in the performance aspect of the main dancer position, so she got the lowest score. Jimin managed to define the performance as the center, so she got the highest score. Gyuri got a small part but made every bit of it stand out, so she got in the top six. Maya got the smallest part but didn't manage to stand out, so she's in the bottom. You can agree or disagree with the assessment, but I personally am not seeing this idea that they're purposefully underscoring contestants to keep them out of the debut lineup in this round. I think the problem is we only see the parts of the feedback that support Mnet's narrative, but multiple survival show contestants have confirmed that the judges slash mentors do give all of them feedback, positive and negative in most cases, but not all of it makes it to air. If it fits the narrative to tell Jungin she absolutely bombed it, then that's what they'll air. If it fits the narrative to tell Juwon that she ate everybody up, then that's what they'll air. During the chair swap, they finally start using the confessionals audio in a void to try to create a narrative, particularly with having Jiyoon gloating about her and Jungin switching places in the ranking. I've said it before and I'll say it again that I simply do not trust those clips because, again, multiple survival show contestants across continents have confirmed that those are often scripted by the show producers or taken completely out of context, even spliced together to push a narrative. My favorite moment of the episode comes when Jiyun, Fuko, and Yuri realize they're all roommates in a reunion of the first to leave island. This 
is what I've been waiting for. In my head, they're the besties line, and the final group would be missing out if it lost any one of them. They not only have a great dynamic, but also a visual and vocal harmony that I've pointed out before. Sorry, but if this wasn't a survival show and the whole debut lineup selection process was happening behind the scenes, they would definitely be under strong consideration to debut together. I wish we got to see them all perform together. In the top three room, we see a new besties line emerging with Coco, Sebi, and Jimin. These two groups of threes really seem to bring out the best in each other. Sebi drops her tag, and Coco's comment about it being a possible sign scares Sebi. I also just want to take the chance to point out how bitter Emna tried to make Yuju and Juwon seem when they were joking about Gyuri not moving her stuff yet. It almost seems like the lower your rank, the more negative edits Emna gives you. But after an hour to get resettled, the girls gather back in the lobby for the second test announcement, the main position test. Where test one was meant to show the mentors and viewers how the girls would do in the black label sound, this test is to see how the main candidates for each position compare to their quote-unquote quote, rivals. But the girls are so used to the rap being a non-factor that Yuri only lists the main vocal dancer and center as options for the test. As revealed in the preview, the main vocal unit is made up of Jiyun and Jungun. They will be tested with Beyonce's If I Were a Boy, if I were a boy. and judged on their interpretation of the song and capacity to represent the final group's color, so to speak. To me, that seems like they're looking for a Rosie or Hyorin type of main vocal and not a Wendy or Jo Yuri type. Taehyung compares them by saying Jungun has a good and refreshing voice, while Jiyun has the sentimentality Jungun lacks. Jiyun is way more hyped for the song than Jungun, and poor Gyuri was stuck in the middle of the tension. We then get the main rap performance unit, which has me raising an eyebrow. This unit consists of Coco and Yuju as rumored, and they will be tasked with CL Spicy. They will be judged on their ability to perform perform attractively as idols with rapping skills. So this gives the impression that they're looking for more of a Lisa or Jujin type where their rapping is secondary to their performance and not a Jenny or Ellie type where they're rappers first, performers second. 24 says he liked the impact of Coco's part in Lovesick Girls, but then they just air his critique of Yuju during the last test instead of his new comment. The main dancer unit is the biggest unit with five members, those being Sujong, Juwon, Mai, Jimin, and Sebi. Immediately, I think this is a showdown between skills versus stage presence. Their performance of Lisa's Money will be evaluated on their performance quality and dominating presence, which just reaffirms my suspicions of why those members. The most noteworthy part to me is their choice to have a main dancer within the main dancer unit because it just seems counterintuitive. This also seems like the team where they want to trim the most candidates, hence why it's the biggest. The final unit is the all-rounders consisting of the remaining Fuko, Gyuri, and Sarang. They don't clarify how this one is evaluated, but their song will be FX's Four Walls, which I deem fair enough. Choreo's intricate enough for their performance skills to be on display, and the melody and vocals are also demanding enough to be showcased. Remember the ranking benefits? Well, now the highest ranked in each team becomes the leader and gets first choice for parts, and then it goes down by rank. This makes Jiyun, Koko, Jimin, and Fuko the leaders of their respective units. Now we start the 12-hour countdown again. Keep in mind... <laughs> This is still the same day as the last test, so the girls performed, came back to island, received their feedback, changed rooms and beds, received their next mission, and now get 12 hours to get to work. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like they're expecting a 24-hour day out of them. In the all-rounder team, as expected, they all go out for part one with Fuko using her rank to her advantage. Similarly, Kyuri quickly picks part two, leaving Sarang with part three. This, paired with Sarang being hung up on her feedback for the last test and ranking outside the top six by one point after originally ranking second, has her feeling dejected and unable to start practicing. I feel for her, I really do. Fuko notices, but we don't really see her help Sarang, which would be so out of character for her to not do. The backgrounds in this episode are really short because they're trying to cram in so many teams and so many stories, so we move on to the rap unit. Kogo asks Yuju to congratulate her on being a leader for the first time, and that seems to ease any tension that might have been there. Expectedly, Coco chooses part one, and as they begin practice, Yuju asks if they can switch positions for the intro. Coco immediately clocks that the reason why is because Yuju prefers the left side of her face. I really think if it wasn't Coco who was paired against Yuju here, the background would have probably been way more tense and individualistic because they're not both rap-focused or dance-focused. They each acknowledge the other's strength in their respective areas. I am also convinced that Emnet was banking on this being a showdown between Yuju and Yui because they both that up with the whistle performance. Had that been so, Coco would have been placed in the dance unit. The vocal team is tense. 
There's clearly a lot of words unsaid between them, but ji decides to just go for it and claim part one, which jung accepts easily. After some struggle with focusing, jung says she's going to practice upstairs instead, and the pair begin practicing apart. They do use a lot of overlaid audio from jung confessional, so I'm taking those with a grain of salt while acknowledging jung clearly feels really insecure about her relationship or lack thereof with ji -yoon. In the dance unit, we see Jimin take the advice Coco gave her back in the team reveal when she decides to go for part one, the center slash main dancer position. Sibi also decides to take a chance and goes for part two, then Sujong takes three, Mai four, and Juwon five. Now, one thing I didn't mention is Emna using a lot of clips and audio of Sujong hyping herself up and saying she can outshine part one even if she does part five. Since she has a background in street dance, there's high expectations for her and she clearly has those expectations for herself as well. When Sibi doubts herself, Jimin cheers her up and reassures her in their room. It's very clear this episode is going to be building up the friendship between Coco, Sebi, and Jimin. So then the countdown ends and tells them to go outside and the girls are all excited. The survival show experts among them guess they'll be doing a field day, which to be fair usually happens at this time. But then Mnet edits an evil nursery over the forest and a mysterious figure approaches. For the first time, I'm pretty sure we see the island gate. So not only are the girls locked in via meta ball, there's a gate and fence at the edge of the forest surrounding island. The orbit in me can only see red flags. Anyway, pro wrestler Jung eun shows up to be their personal trainer, and then the show calls out ji and Jimin and Sebi for being slow runners. This arc turns out to be Jimin's main character moment yet again, as she's shown to be extremely weak when it comes to the exercises, but wins in flexibility easily. For the interim, Kim Jeohan is back as a special mentor, probably because of the vocal unit. We start with the all-rounders who showcase a good dance performance, but the vocals are really weak. 24 says the song suits Sarang the most, but she lacks confidence. Jeohan says the whole thing was unstable from the start. Sa Sarang has no strength in her voice because she's unsure. Vivian criticizes the whole team for getting the song interpretation all wrong, saying they were too bubbly when the song is mysterious and almost dreamlike. This criticism has a lot of Sarang focus, so that signals to me that this test is more for her than Fuko and Kyuri. In the dance interim, Sujong is a beat off during her solo part, and Sebi loses her footing in the center. Lee Jung says it just wasn't good, felt like watching a school dance club. She also says that Jimin and Sebi are too worried about looking pretty while performing. Monica says their performance is only 10% complete after 12 hours of practice. 24 or, oddly enough, points out that their lip sync was off and calls that a total failure. First time I've seen that be a criterion. To me, it seems the dance unit has definitely been split into Jimin and Sebi, great performers with little to no street dance background. Sojong and Juwon, great dancers with street dance background, and Mai, a dancer with a long background but more stage presence. The vocal team never practiced together, and things go south quickly as they both start forgetting their lyrics. It was painful to watch, but I can't blame them too much when neither are fluent in English. 24 asks them what kind of feedback they were expecting performing like that in the interim. Jaehwan says he already gave up at the first verse and says he couldn't get excited for the next part. The final interim is the rap performance, and they really outslayed everyone. 24 asks the dance and vocal teams for their opinions on the performance. Jimin notes that they both really understood the song, while Jiyoon answers that they were clearly the most prepared team. 24 adds that they did well, and Monica comments that this team was supposed to have the hardest task. Jaehwan says that their nasty attitude was good, while Lee Jung adds that the other teens annoyed her, but this team made her feel better and the others should reflect. Both Coco and Yuju note that this was the first time neither of them received criticism in an interim. In the final background before the performance, we see the all-rounders try to work out how to accurately portray the performance, so they look to analyzing the lyrics, which seems to be a trend we mostly see with Fuko's teams. They decide that the song should be portrayed as sexy and mysterious, which... <sighs> Yeah, okay. There's also a pretty cute moment where they're wondering what mirage means and then Coco walks into the room. It was just nice to get a break from the constant drama and seeing the girls having some fun, which is a running theme for Coco this episode. They gave the performance a mermaid concept, which was an interesting choice for sure. I would have gone for a mysterious rose garden instead, but I guess Mnet has a lot of water-themed props left over from Queendom Puzzle. The performance itself is fine overall. Nothing in particular really stood up for me in the beginning, except the fact that the girls don't really have strong falsetto support, which, yes, you can develop your falsetto range and support it. However, something I was really struck by was how Sarang is clearly the third Jung sister. She looks so similar to Crystal this stage. I get why 24 said this was supposed to be most suited to her. 
The vocals were fine, Sarang had a little voice crack, but it wasn't even in the part she stressed about in the background. I won't say it ruined her performance, but that's two voice cracks in a row. It's a little more disappointing because she's been so strong vocally in part one, but her dance was flawless and her stage presence felt very balanced. Fuko is very consistent and I do think she visually captured the theme the best. I think this song isn't her strong suit vocally, or at least not her parts. From what I could hear, she got some of Victoria's parts and it felt a little bit like she was attempting to sound closer to her and that left her out of support by the end of some of her lines. But Gyuri was the most memorable part of this performance to me. She got some real vocal stand-up parts, her voice was strong and stable throughout. I think she was trying to have a sultry slash mysterious vibe, but she just has really smiley eyes. <laughs> but I need someone to get a viral moment time an idol trainee that lip bites and winks aren't the epitome of facial expressions because that was very badly executed and just doesn't suit her. Overall, I think this team was pretty well balanced and they all got to show off their strengths and weaknesses, which makes this a successful all-rounders battle to me. Monica comments saying Fuko can't get out of her comfort zone and while I've seen some reactions saying, how could she? You put her in this song. I think what Monica meant wasn't to do with the song or concept, but the execution. Fuko was very similar to her performance in Bad Boy and both of them are pretty reserved. I think she meant it more along the lines that even if Fuko is in a comfortable concept, she doesn't really take any risks or do anything bold within it. She had that soft smile throughout, but if you look at FX performing this song, you'll see Crystal try a lot of striking expressions, more expressionless even. I think that's something they wanted to see from Fuko as the center, more risks. Taeyang comments on Sarang going out of tune while Lee Jung adds that she likes her guts. Yuri doesn't get a comment. That brings us to the rap performance unit, and this is where I noticed they always have Taeyang hype up the YG songs. It's kind of funny, but mostly because it took me so long to figure out. Either way, in the background, we see Coco and Yuju having fun and hyping each other up, and it was a really nice break from the constant drama storylines. On to the performance, I think it was unevenly matched in distribution. While watching it in the episode, I was definitely more hyped than the rewatch because all the little details that bothered me then were suddenly glaringly obvious. Let's start with the styling. Coco gets what I can only describe as a skin-tight outfit highlighting her body line. This means that her moves, like the leg swipe, seem even more accentuated. She has the advantage of a tall and long body and legs. I originally compared this performance to try and find a Lisa-type member, and I think that's why Coco was styled like this. She also had her hair up in a high ponytail, which is a style we see frequently on Lisa as well. Not saying they're copying her or trying to make a Lisa 2.0, but I think they wanted to highlight the similarities between the two to make Coco look even better subconsciously. Compared to Yuju, who was put in baggy clothes and had her hair down, minimizing her her body line and making her smaller stature look even smaller next to Coco. I think for the most part, both of them did their parts really well. Coco pulled off the rap and Yuju pulled off the performance, but it was still designed in a way where I want to say Coco did better by miles. But if I were to watch the fan cams to decide, I think I would say that the margin between them is much smaller. I still think Yuju has an issue with rapping too far back, which means she lacks in projection and sounds a bit throaty. Definitely something that can be fixed, but also something that hasn't been fixed throughout the course of the show, and I doubt we'll see fixed by the end. In comparison, Coco is less fluid in her rapping, but she makes up for that in presentation. I also think the choreo itself was pretty weak, just as a choreo, but I can't really judge that, that's just how it appears to me. Lee Jung comments that she got chills just seeing Coco walk during, I think it was the dance break portion. Monica then adds that Yuju was good, but Coco was overwhelming, which, like I said, I think had a lot more to do with styling than execution. In the dance unit's background, Jimin and Sebi are almost considered separate from the other three. This comes back to my original judgment of this unit as being stage presence versus skills. During their private lesson with Monica and Lee Jung, Lee Jung calls out Sebi for not knowing and not really understanding the lyrics. She says she wants more bad girl energy from her. We also find out that Mai seems so discouraged because she was unanimously voted the worst in the self-evaluation, the reveal of which caused her to suddenly burst into tears. There's some attempt to fix Soo Jung's image by highlighting how she's the first to jump up and comfort her, but the damage was done. I even had to stop and remind myself that we don't have the full context of either situation because my immediate thought was about how disingenuous it felt. It does humanize Mai though, who up until this point has been shown to be very emotionally strong and able to handle criticism without it affecting her. It was probably her uncertainty in the unit as well as her recent string of bad judges scores that culminated in this. So I'm going to use this as a reminder for all of you that crying is a very 
very natural way for your body and mind to process strong emotions and there's no shame in crying. You don't always have to be the strongest person in the room. The top three spend their time together outside of practice, helping Sebi work on her stage persona and execution, with Coco helping both of them fix their details. At the same time, Mai practices hard on her own in the middle of the night. On to the performance, we start with an extended VCR intro featuring Jimin. I didn't like that. Felt very unnecessary and honestly underwhelming. None of them were really selling that rich girl attitude. Anyways, I've already been over me not being great with judging dance performances. I don't think any of them were egregiously bad. Jimin had the added benefit of so many solo parts to stand out, but my personal ranking of this stage is something like Jimin, Sebi, Sujong, Juwon, Mai. I can't really explain it, but Jimin got really into it once the performance actually started, and I felt like she showed versus versatility as well with the contrast between the verses, pre-chorus, chorus, and dance break. I think she was a great center for the stage and I can't really see any of the girls doing it better than she did based on what we've seen on the show. Sebi reminded me of her performance in Sweet Venom, that is to say, good sense for expressions but a bit unrefined. I think she improved a lot from the interim and her hard work did pay off in the final stage. Sujung I was a bit disappointed in seeing as this is her specialty, but the stage presence really wasn't selling it to me. The dancing itself looked fine, but this wasn't the outstanding performance I was expecting after all the hype. Similarly with Juwon, she was probably a victim of her small part, which is another thing. The parts distribution was not great, but I also feel like she was showing us kind of the exact same performance as in the previous dance unit. Similar expression, similar move execution, it just didn't come off quite as natural as I wanted to see from these two being in their element. And lastly is Mai. The moves looked fine enough to me, but I don't think she was selling the performance at all. Her expressions felt like they didn't match, her vibe was too cheeky, if that makes sense. They're all great dancers to me, so it really just comes down to how I experience their performance, nothing really technical. The mentors only really mentioned Jimin, with Taeyang saying something to the effect of her giving great face. I don't remember what exactly he said, but something like that. All the mentors agree that this is what they wanted to see from Jimin throughout part one. I also agree. Keeping up with fan spaces, it was very clear that she was known as a standout performer on Are You Next, but this is the first time she's really felt deserving of that hype. She came close last performance, but this was her moment. That brings us to the vocal unit, the one I dread talking about. It honestly just makes me want to abandon this episode review because it was an uncomfortable watch. Jungin and Jiyoon's conflict was definitely pretty one-sided, and the responses to it are something I can empathize with from both directions. I just don't like how Mnet treats it. It's not allowed to exist, it has to be dramatized. We have to get five different cuts of Jiyun looking up at Jung and practicing on her own to hype up how she's contemplating something, but they already spoiled that she approached Jung and first. But anyways, she apologizes for how she's been treating Jung and how upset she's been at her. She goes all the way back to her elimination from Island, and Emna corrects my misremembering from the last video, and Fuko, Kyuri, and Jiyun each only received one vote. They also take this chance to show us all of these clips of how close Jung and Jiyun got during the signal song prep, and it's just just... Look, not to be a Jiyun one pick, but I feel like this just confirms that Jiyun becoming so popular and empathetic during that arc was not Mnet's intention. They were willing to throw Jiyun under the bus to hype up Jungin as the de facto main vocal back then, and it explains so much about how Jiyun and Jungin were framed by the show up until the first position battle. Because if they had shown these moments of the two becoming close during the Signal Song arc, audiences would have immediately sided with Jiyun with no argument when she got upset that not even Jungin voted for her to stay because I think we can all empathize with that kind of upset. Had we known that they had grown so close and Jiyun still did well in the final performance despite her initial sulking, but someone who was safe and she was close with still didn't vote for her to stay? Yeah, I wouldn't want their sympathy either. But because they don't actually show that to us until now in part two, and they only revealed the source of her upset partly last episode, it's clear their intentions towards Jiyun's shifted with audience response. They have been pitting the two against each other and they had a narrative they were going with in the first two missions. Jungin is the no faults main vocalist, all rounder, reluctant but capable leader, the only one capable of pulling off Panorama's main vocal. Jiyun is the stubborn second main vocal candidate who can't even adapt to a cute concept and her vocals aren't enough to make up for her not suiting the concept and also she's an emotional wreck. But then there's the vocal position battle and Jiyun overshadows not just her teammate but the other team all on her own and the audience has already sided with her, and Mnet's editing tactics shift. Suddenly, there's actually a lot of faults you can find with Jungin as a vocalist, and I say suddenly because I don't think those criticisms came out of nowhere. I think they were definitely present as early as the entrance test. This is just when Mnet decided to start airing them. Another reveal that I think makes this point that they shifted from Jungin's narrative to Jiyun's because of the audience response is that they reveal here that during the first position battle, Jungin had cried to Fuko 
over feeling isolated, hurt by Jiyun ignoring her, unable to speak to Fuko, her partner, because the two of them were close. Had the narrative not shifted due to audience response, we would have seen this when it happened to drum up sympathy for Jungin and push for a negative image for Jiyun. Keeping in mind that the entirety of part one had already been filmed before airing, they had already figured out what narratives they had and what they could push. They weren't expecting the audience to take Jiyun's side, but when they did, and when domestic reception towards Jungin skewed negative, whether because of colorism or her sister, both very unfair reasons, they changed what this storyline was. I'm not saying Jiyun was right for how she dealt with this, but I get it and I don't think someone should be demonized for it. Before getting into the performance, I also want to add that my comment last episode about potentially dropping Jungin from my lineup was not because I don't think she deserves to debut, but between her performances in part 2 not impressing me, her conflict with Jiyun, and the framing of her response to Sebi's leadership or lack thereof, I wanted to keep my options open. Not everything is a personal attack on your fave. In the performance, however, Ji Yoon utilizes a new technique for hitting high notes that she learned from Jaehwan. Really confused on the timeline here though, because they make it seem like this one-on-one -on -one session happens after they reconcile, but in the previous mission, it probably happened right after the interim. They probably wouldn't have had him leave and come back, so we can pretty much assume this also happens right after the interim, but the resolution of the conflict was framed like Ji Yoon had a change of heart after the interim. All this to say, Mnet is being Mnet, and I believe the two reconciled before before the interim, but not long enough before to make up for them practicing apart. You can never trust Mnet's timelines, they will only reveal things when they want to. Look, listen, I am not a professional. I don't know all the names for everything, all my analyses of vocals are based on what it sounds like to me. And to me, it sounds like both of them were pushing themselves out of their comfortable ranges to sing this song. They both sounded pretty strained on the long high notes. Jungin struggles to connect registers. I think the song being in English was a disservice to them both because they both do this thing you'll notice K-pop singers do a lot when they're not really comfortable singing in English, which is they become a lot more throaty than usual. Jungin's is more obvious because her tone is a lot clearer and Jiyun's tone hides it better, but they both have moments where it sounds like their throat is closed off from their noses. There's a huge difference in vocal quality with a closed versus open throat. Jungin's run in the last chorus is sloppy, which isn't really her fault. Runs are a skill on their own, and it's pretty clear her voice doesn't have a lot of R&B training compared to Jiyun, who's probably practiced R&B songs a lot coming from the Black Label. When Jiyun goes out of her comfortable range, it's really obvious, but when she stays in that lower register where you can really feel her emotions, it's almost enough to make up for it. Comparatively, because we are forced to compare, I do think Jiyun did a lot better in this stage, largely because she's just more suited to the song. She has a voice that goes really well with R&B. She doesn't have the highest range, but I feel like we don't give lower registers enough credit. And if it was anyone else, this unit would have been about how that person couldn't hit those lower notes or the high notes. We also just don't give her enough credit for her emoting skills, which absolutely saved this vocal performance. Had this been exactly the same, but without the emotions Jiyun put into it, this could have easily been one of the worst survival show vocal stages to date. Jung did fine, again, nothing egregiously bad. I was a bit disappointed with how much strain I heard given she's always been presented as the high note vocal compared to Jiyun as the voice color vocal. Her not having appropriate training for a song like this isn't really her fault. Vocal runs aren't easy and a good run takes a different set of skills from just developing good range. I think if they'd gotten a similar song but in Korean, we would have seen pretty much the exact same performance but without the throatiness, which is probably my biggest issue in this stage. All in all, this was a high 80s performance for Jiyun, low 80s for Jungin in my opinion. The mentors talk a lot, but they don't really have anything to say. Taeyang says Jiyun managed to interpret every section of the song differently. Jaehwan says Jungin sounded like a recording in her first verse. 24 is just relieved that they actually pulled it off. They do mention Jaehwan's dad technique and compliment Jiyun for reaching a note out of her comfortable range. That brings us to the audience scores. I've been yapping long enough, so I'll just go over them. The scores are based on a 300 person audience, again, with no limit on how many they can vote for. In 12th is Sujong with only half the audience and 150 votes. How much of this was based on her performance and how much on her perceived attitude in the last episode, who's to say? In 11th, and a bit of an upset, is Jungin with only 187 votes. Most people were expecting something in the 200s at least for her. In 10th is Juwon, the other's loss is her gain. She manages 195 votes from the audience. Yuji becomes the first to break 200 with an even 200 votes, securing the number 9 spot. Mai is 
is not too far ahead in 8th, reaching 204 votes. In 7th, just barely out of the top 6 with 233 votes, is none other than Cutie. Pushing ahead by 4 votes is Jiyun in 6th, netting 237 votes. In 5th place is Sarang, just barely edging Jiyun out with 238 votes. Sebi places in 4th, gathering 243 votes from the audience. Fuko manages a top 3 spot in 3rd place with 250 points. The top 2 spots cause a shift in expectations as Jimin lands in 2nd with 252 votes from the audience, while Coco takes 266 all the way to 1st place. If you ask me, I think the duos were probably the performances with the most split votes, as in more audience members felt compelled to vote for only one or the other, while the trio and 5 person performance probably had more audience members willing to vote for for two or more. This means the vocal and rap units end up with the biggest gaps. If everyone in the audience voted, that means only 34 people only voted for Yuju and 63 only voted for Jungin. I'm not going to promise my math is correct on this, so I will pin whoever can correct it. Out of 300 votes, Jungin got 187, Jiyun got 237. Jiyun did not receive 63 votes, and if everyone in the audience voted, that means Jungin alone got those 63 votes. So 187 minus 63 is a total of 124 overlapping votes. Subtracting that from Jiyun's total of 237, we have 113 unique votes for Jiyun. That does add up in my calculator 124 plus 63 plus 113 for a total of 300 votes. Similarly, out of 300 votes, Yuju got 200, Koko got 266. Koko did not receive 34 possible votes, and if everyone has to vote, that means those went to Yuju. 200 minus 34 is 166 overlapping votes. That means Koko received about 100 unique votes. This math is a lot simpler due to Yuju having an even 200, so 100 plus 34 plus 166 makes 300. It cannot be more complicated than that. If you tried this for the other units, it would be, but basically, this is why the biggest gaps are between the duos. If they had been trios or larger, I do think we would see a distribution closer to the other units simply because people wouldn't be as it's one or the other. But this, to me, leads to the conclusion that the live audience leaned heavily towards Jiyun and Coco with a larger preference for Jiyun. But we still haven't gotten into the mentor scores. They start with the all-rounder unit, they compliment Sarang, saying she improved this time because even though she made a mistake, she didn't let it ruin the whole performance. They also give a shout out to Gyuri, finally getting a comment for, I think, the first first time since like Ua. They say she was great and they're happy to see her improving with every performance. Fuko does not get a comment. Fuko receives the lowest score of an 82 for a total of 178 points, Sarang follows with an 84 and a total of 176, and Gyuri receives the highest score of an 89 and a total score of 177. This means the all-rounders follow each other in a line from first to third place for now with only a point difference between them. For the vocal unit, they give Jungan some appreciation for working hard to improve on her weaknesses, which they have stated previously to be her emoting. I don't remember Jiyun getting a comment. Jungan receives a score of 80 points for a total of 100. 60, while Jiyun receives a 91 and shoots up to first place with a total score of 181. I'm going to add it here because I know people got up in arms about it, but please do remember that the units are being judged on different criterions. They will be tested with Beyonce's If I Were a Boy and judged on their interpretation of the song and capacity to represent the final group's colors. They will be judged on their ability to perform attractively as idols with rapping skills. So they will be evaluated on their performance quality and dominating presence. They don't clarify how this one is evaluated. But this does not necessarily mean that they think Sarang's performance was overall better than Jungun's, but that Sarang's performance better fit her unit's criteria than Jungun fit hers. Sarang was tasked with showcasing an all-rounder's performance, she pulled off her dancing, stage presence, and interpretation well, and her vocals had a slight flaw. I don't know what the mentors were thinking when evaluating Jungun's performance, but if their revealed criteria is correct, I do think it is correct to assess that she did well overall, but lacked in the group color and interpretation departments. These are things she can improve, but if these are the main criteria and she doesn't quite meet them, then an 80 out of 100 is fair enough, in my opinion. I already said I don't think she suited the song because she has more pop vocals than R&B, and that's not her fault. But if the producers want the final group to have a heavy R&B color like many YG acts do, then Jungin doesn't match that. She can improve and work on it, but I think that is an unfair standard, but not an unfair judgment. If Jiyun gets a low score for not suiting like Ua, even when we all know she's a great vocalist and that's just not a song suited to her, then... Moving on to the dancers, the mentors praised Jimin, saying she was the best, totally owned the stage, and proved that she deserved the main dancer position. 24 has the worst analogies, so he compliments Sebi on doing 
her best to try to present something that doesn't quite suit her with a weird clothes analogy. Su Jung Joon and Mai do not receive comments, and I think that is the source of upset. All three of them receive a score of 77 points for a total of 155, 159, and 163, respectively. Is it a bit harsh? Yes, but I do get it because I wasn't that impressed with their performances either, and they're the three unit members with the largest dance background. Jimin also has a solid dance background, but not to the extent of these three. Speaking of which, Sebi receives a score of 81 for a total of 175 points, and Jimin receives a score of 97 for a total of 195 points, surpassing Jiyun for the number one spot for now. For the final rap performance unit, the mentors compliment Coco, saying this was a chance to showcase her most impactful self, and they look forward to her future performances. Yuju does not get a comment. Yuju receives a score of 80 points for a total of 164 points, just barely pushing past Mai into 8th place. Coco receives the highest score of the night when her mentor score of 96 pushes her into 1st place with a total of 196 points. Our current top 6 are now Coco, Jimin, Jiyun, Fuko, Kyuri, and Sarang. To be honest, this is kind of a great lineup for me personally. <laughs> 5 out of my top 6 are in and I was honestly never expecting more than 5 of them in the final lineup at most anyways because of Jimin's overwhelming support. Even if it's just for one week, I'm really happy to see my top 6 so well represented at the top. The episode ends with a teaser revealing that two girls will be eliminated next episode, but I could have sworn they started part 2 by saying three girls would be eliminated before the finale.